Welcome to the 2020 World AIDS Day Memorial Service held each year here at the Positive Living Centre in Melbourne, Australia. My name is Luke Gallagher and I'm privileged to host this important community event, which I have done for the past 11 years. This day is so important for so many of us. Not only does it give us the chance to remember and honour those that we've loved and lost, but it's a chance for those of us here today to come together to celebrate those we love, not just to remember them loudly and proudly, but to meet and to join with one another again. Sometimes it's the only time each year we get to come together. This particular event is number one on my list. It's something that I return to each year because I get to connect with people that have grown very important to me. We get to remember those that we've loved and lost on a day like today, but we also get to see one another again. And that's part of this yearly event that makes it so special. So despite not being together, I'm thrilled that we can connect virtually and visually. So my love to you all, and next year, let's do it all in person. Hi, and welcome everybody to Thorn Harbour's World AIDS Day event. My name is Michelle Tobin, and I have been living with HIV for 30 years. I'm a Yorta Yorta woman who is a mother to two beautiful daughters and an older stepdaughter, as well as five beautiful grandchildren. I also have a loving partner who is very supportive of me. Currently, I am on the Central Coast in New South Wales, coming to you live, and I'm also sitting on Dark and Jung land. Um, so today, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Banarong, Bun Wurrung, and Wurundjeri Woi Wurrung, peoples of the Eastern Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past and present and emerging. I would also like to pay my respects to our brothers and sisters that have gone before us. Sovereignty in this country was never ceded and was and always will be Aboriginal land. As we know today is World AIDS Day. It is a day where we remember and we reflect. Today, I also remember my late husband who passed away in 92. As you would see from some of the panels that have been on display at the Positive Living Centre here in Paran, that my late husband's panel, which I created back not long after his passing, to remind people of the many that have been lost over the years. The National World AIDS Day theme for Australia in 2020 is now more than ever. World AIDS Day aims to encourage Australians to educate themselves and others about HIV, to take action and to reduce the transmission of HIV by promoting prevention strategies and to ensure that people living with HIV can participate fully in the life of the community free from stigma and discrimination. As a community and as individuals, there's a lot we can do in relation to HIV. Working in partnership with people with HIV, we can encourage others to understand how HIV is transmitted. We can support people to access treatment and testing and also care. As we know that commencing treatment in the early stages of HIV results in better health outcomes and reduces the likelihood of onward transmission. The UN AIDS theme for World AIDS Day 2020 is global solidarity, shared responsibility. UN AIDS is leading the global effect to end AIDS as a public health threat by 2030 as part of the Sustainable Development Goals. The focus of UN AIDS is, is on stopping new infe HIV infections, ensuring that everyone living with HIV has access to HIV treatment, protecting and prom promoting human rights and producing data for decision making. The numbers for Aboriginal people with new infection rates across the country have continued to stay on the, the rise compared to non-Indigenous. We are 2.4% higher, which is not acceptable for us or our communities. And it should not be acceptable for others who work within the sector either. There needs to be more work around breaking the barriers of stigma and discrimination. There needs to be more work around promoting resources that are similar to what is available for the non-Indigenous communities, such as PrEP and U equals U messages. These messages are really important for our communities to have an understanding that to protect themselves from HIV. 
So today, more than ever, we really need to work side by side to make sure that our mob, as well as your mob, are being protected from HIV, as well as making sure that they have access to the right kind of care, the access to appropriate treatment, and that culturally safe practices are there for our communities. Thank you. Every year on December the 1st, the world commemorates World AIDS Day. People around the world unite to show support for people living with and affected by HIV and to remember those who lost their lives. In 2020, the world's attention has been focused by the COVID-19 pandemic on health and how pandemics affect our lives and livelihoods. COVID-19 is showing once again how health is interlinked with other critical issues such as reducing inequality, human rights, gender equality, social protection and mental health support. With this in mind, this year the global theme of World AIDS Day is global solidarity, shared responsibility. The National World AIDS Day theme for Australia in 2020 is now more than ever. World AIDS Day aims to encourage Australians to educate themselves and others about HIV to take action to reduce the transmission of HIV by promoting prevention strategies and to ensure that people living with HIV can participate fully in the life of the community, free from stigma and discrimination. These issues continue to be important, now more than ever. In this beautiful space that is the Positive Living Centre, we will focus on remembrance. These glass shards suspended in the main hall memorialise the names of those living with HIV who have died over the last 30 years. We encourage you to celebrate and honour the lives that were lived and rejoice in the lives of those who continue to touch others while maintaining a sense of hope for the future. Synonymous with World AIDS Day are the AIDS Memorial Quilts, which were launched in the later part of the 80s, commemorating Australians who have died. Each unique panel is a memorial made by friends, families and lovers, and often includes mementos like clothing, favourite objects and photographs. Some panels memorialise groups of people rather than individuals. You can tell so much about a person's life from each panel and it is the most incredible memorial and one which enables a viewer to see the humanity behind the statistics. They are a beautiful, broad expanse of colour and feeling, each panel made with love for the person being honoured and celebrated. The quilt is a powerful statement. Its image serves as a memorial to all the people and their loved ones whose lives have been transformed by the epidemic over the past 35 years. World AIDS Day is a sacred day on the Thorn Harbour Health calendar. Every year we hold the memorial service in the Positive Living Centre. Old friends come together to reminisce, to remember those they have lost and to imagine how things could have been different. It is an event where people can grieve openly for those they've lost. In these days of marriage equality and pride cups, we should never forget that at the height of the epidemic 30 years ago, things were very different. It wasn't legal to be gay everywhere in Australia, and families often hid from those around them that their son or their brother 
was gay and had died of AIDS. The World AIDS Day Memorial is an important event for those of us who weren't allowed to grieve openly or who were excluded from their lover or loved one's final days and funeral for fear of others finding out. It was a different world back then, and whilst possibly, on reflection, you can understand why people who'd led sheltered lives reacted that way, it would not be okay today, and it certainly was not okay then. Many people today are still living with the hurt and the trauma caused by those events. The World AIDS Day Memorial Service is an opportunity to share some of that load. And sadly, HIV stigma is still with us, despite all the gains that have been made in Australia. You can now live well with HIV and the vast majority of people are able to achieve undetectable status, meaning that they can't pass on the virus. We should be celebrating people living with HIV who have often carried the weight of our prevention efforts, not treating them differently because of their status. HIV stigma is real. We need to be calling out HIV stigma when we see it and helping educate our communities that we all have a role to play in ending the impact of HIV. World AIDS Day is particularly important as we diversify our services as it is a day when the whole organisation comes together to remember what inspired the original group of volunteers to establish us and also to reflect on how far we've come. It is a week when we would usually paint the town red, when we would have hundreds of staff and volunteers working together to hand out red ribbons and talk about HIV. COVID has changed much of that this year, but in 2021, we'll be back on the streets reminding everyone that now more than ever, HIV still matters. Sometimes, particularly for younger community members, it's easy to forget what it was like, why our founders fought so hard. We are incredibly lucky at Thorn Harbour Health to be the custodians of the AIDS Memorial Quilts and the Legends Exhibition. These exhibits bring our journey to life and remind us of those who've gone before us. Keith Harbour looms large in the exhibits and I'm very aware of the legacy that I and the staff and the board have the honour of shepherding forward. We're also lucky that many of the leaders from our early days are still with us, who regularly provide sage advice, historical context and fantastic stories. Alison Thorne, Phil Carswell, Adam Carr, Jamie Gardner, Chris Gill, Bill O'Loughlin, Bruce Parnell, Tony Keenan, Bev Greet, David Menadieu, Susan Paxton, Dennis Altman and many, many other life members who are still a driving force within the organisation. As we make great strides forward towards ending the epidemic in Australia through education, prevention and treatment, World AIDS Day reminds us that not everyone is in such a fortunate position. Around the world, AIDS is still a leading cause of death for many groups. Unlike in Australia, where we have managed to contain the epidemic, in many of the countries in our region, HIV affects sex workers, drug users, trans communities, people of colour and heterosexual women. We need to stay vigilant to maintain the gains we have made and to assist our brothers and sisters elsewhere to have the same successes. Ending HIV is within our grasp. Imagine if we paid as much attention to HIV as we have to COVID. The only thing standing in our way of ending HIV is the political will. I'd like to encourage all of you to talk about HIV, to talk about what it is holding us back. Every week, try to have a conversation with someone new about HIV and what it means to you. Let people know that now more than ever, HIV still matters. And in closing, I'd like to thank our partners who make this event possible each year. Living Positive Victoria, Positive Women Victoria, the Catholic AIDS Ministry, the Thorn Harbour Health staff and volunteers, and every one of you who takes the time to attend. Our vision is a future without HIV, and by attending this event, you are all an important part of helping us achieve that vision. Thank you. John Jackson has become an integral and important part of this event since 2009, and we are so fortunate to have him back with us in 2020. John has played roles for Opera Australia and Chambermaid Opera, as well as writing a libretto for Oz Opera. His solo work has seen him perform several one-man shows. John is a man who possesses an extraordinary vocal range and has impressed his audiences all over throughout the years.
This year, now more than ever, we are called upon to reflect on the journeys that our peers and community have undertaken in living with HIV. Whether you are a woman or a man from a culturally and linguistically diverse background, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander or a member of the trans and gender diverse community, the impact of HIV can be a challenge for most people. HIV still matters and it can affect anyone. Positive people have been at the forefront of prevention, education and policy for over three decades. Despite so many challenges in dealing with HIV, those living with the virus continue to show courage, commitment and resilience. The sharing of people's stories and the history of HIV remains a cornerstone of all our ongoing endeavours and it continues to be important to hear the voices of people living with HIV. Hello everyone and thank you for inviting me today to be with you. Even though it's virtual, um, to sit here in the blessed halls of the Positive Living Centre, I feel as if you're right here beside me. I'm privileged to be here as President of Living Positive Victoria, but I feel much more so just as me, Christabel, a person living with HIV. Today and every day, Please allow me to honour all of our precious loved ones who have passed away due to HIV and AIDS. Although we may experience feelings of loss, I hope we can all feel we are only richer because we had their presence and their love in our lives. Although I became positive about 10 years ago um, and did not live through the discriminatory terror of the 80s and 90s, please know I and other more recently diagnosed people absolutely cherish the stories we hear from you of your loved ones that were lost to AIDS and its stigma. When you share anecdotes and memories, I feel like I'm being let in on a story of bravery and fierce love that ignites a reminder to live as they would be now, standing up for their freedoms and the rights of the most marginalised, whether that be through visiting the PLC and a food bank to make sure they're connected to their own community, to gathering here to organise mutual aid and advocate for services that truly fit their needs. I say thank you today and every day for all of those who have gone before us and to all of you who are watching for loving them when the rest of the world turned away. I want to acknowledge today what we have experienced this year as a collective, another global pandemic, the familiarity of watching too many lives lost to a virus, simply because countries around the world focused on individualistic policies, shunned community care and rejected the preservation of life simply in favour of the economy. Here in Australia and in Melbourne in particular, we have had a complex time. I don't know about you, but I have struggled and stumbled constantly as I've heard the secret phrases of our HIV life slip out of every mouth and every media outlet. Suddenly, Newcastle's colleagues are saying viral load and testing positive and infected. It was stunning to experience a mass of people becoming acquainted with these words for the first time. How fortunate they are, I have thought that they have those who have lived with HIV pave the way for their experience. As we know, one of the messages today is that HIV still matters, that this virus and we still matter, because this community has set the precedent for meaningful involvement in all of our own care and has battled to retain our right to dignity as HIV positive people at all costs. The resilience of those who are watching today is unparalleled, even though those affected by this recent pandemic don't know it yet. You are the ones who will treat them fairly, treat them with kind-heartedness and not let them be forgotten as this country forces forward with a false normality. I offer you today to engage in radical softness and act as the eldest sibling that we all wish we had when our pandemic began. 
Do not let the fear-mongering of this year turn you hard. Find ways to engage in softness where you can. That emboldens you to flex your resilience muscles and show those new to a life with a virus how it is done. Now, before I go, I do just want to talk about the unprecedented year that we have had in terms of civil rights and that the curtain has firmly been pulled back for any of those people who are still blind to the fact that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are subject to intense discrimination and inexcusable treatment at unacceptable levels and all at the hands of the institutions that are supposed to serve our communities. The black people of this land experience much higher rates of HIV, despite making up a smaller part of the population. This cannot continue. The 2020s must be the decade that we turn this around now more than ever. So please let me leave you today with my love and let me say what I can to uplift you today. What you have been through in your life makes you so equipped for this moment. You will each be a guiding light in your community. No matter how big or small, you will shine. Community is the only cure that we have and you will always have the embrace of this community. I can't wait to see you all again in person for a hug. Thank you for having me on World AIDS Day in 2020. My name is Jacob Boehm. I'm a choreographer, dancer and writer from the Narunga and Ghana nations of South Australia. I was diagnosed with HIV in 1998. I'm the writer and performer of the critically acclaimed solo work Blood on the Dance Floor, winner of the 2017 Green Room Award for Best Independent Production. Blood on the Dance Floor has toured nationally and internationally since 2016. And through this work, I pay homage to the ceremonies of my ancestors while searching for answers in a powerful blend of storytelling, projection and movement. After 30 years of dealing with the global epidemic of HIV, 
The experience of stigma, discrimination and silence around the HIV virus are just as present today. By sharing my personal story, unapologetically, of being Aboriginal, gay and pos, Blood on the Dance Floor is an opportunity to create a space for our mob to have a voice in the dialogue around HIV. A conversation at a table we really haven't been invited to in this country. We, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community, have been dealing with HIV right from the early days, back in the 80s, mostly silently and with shame. A lack of engagement with us or provision of culturally sensitive and self-determined sexual health care and promotion is now seeing a spike in detection rates in our community, particularly among Indigenous women and IV drug users. The rate of HIV diagnosis is 1.6 times higher among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders than Australian-born non-Indigenous people. Blood on the Dance Floor is a story of our need to love and be loved. The following excerpt called Ode to Anthony honours those that we have lost to HIV in the Aboriginal community and the significance of keeping their memories alive by simply saying their names. There is no time for shame. We need to take our seat at that table, our silence broken, our voices heard, and our brothers and sisters remembered. Anthony, beautiful dancer, limbs long and sinewy like a grasshopper, and eyes, beautiful green eyes, too good to be on a man, women would kill for him. We used to meet every Friday after class at the shift, same table by the window, perfect spot to catch every passing bit of trade. Donna Summer blaring, disco lights going off like it's 3 a.m. Something's up. What's wrong with you? Nothing. Yeah, right, what's up? Got my results back. I look at him and he turns to me and he says, that, that look. I don't need anyone's fucking pity. I don't want that look, right? I didn't know what to say. I'd never... I hadn't come across. A couple of weeks later, he asks me to drive him back to his country. He wanted to go back to country. We get there. The family call him sick. Disown him ask us to leave. Month later, there he is, in his bedroom hanging from the ceiling fan. The family come down, claim his things. They allow me to collect him from the morgue. When I get there, they give me two garbage bags. They cut him up for research. Took everything, took his liver, his kidneys, took his lungs, just sliced him up. They even took his eyes. Those beautiful green eyes. I just wanted to give him one last hug. All that was left was two cheap black garbage bags. And then he was gone. Disappeared. No one ever mentioned his death. And no one ever spoke his name again. Anthony.
in country, on hands, spilled, stained, naps, pathways, roads of shame, lands, lines, winding you back, flowing through history, we follow like spies, clues, keys, unlocking secrets in family trees, features that skip traits to scorn, claimed with pride, eyes, a nose, a temper that boils, viscous and crimson, a dad spit, a father's cry, daddy's eyes. The Catholic AIDS Ministry, and in particular Marg Hayes, have been an integral part of this gathering for many, many years. Marg is the coordinator of the Catholic AIDS Ministry and a long-time HIV activist. She has strong links with various peer-based positive communities, including the Victorian prison population. Marg provides pastoral care at the Alfred Hospital and is known to many people living with HIV across this state. On this World AIDS Day 2020, we unite under the panels of the AIDS Memorial Quilt and the suspended shards at the Positive Living Centre to remember and reflect upon those who have died and give thanks for what they brought into our lives. We come together as we have on World AIDS Day many of us for many years, to remember and honour the people we have loved and lost to HIV and AIDS. These people who have been very important in our lives and who remain a part of us, even though they are not physically present. We come to celebrate, for we know that those who have loved us want us to go on. This year, our gathering is a little different as we sit in front of various electronic devices. But in a year when we have had to find new ways of gathering, we do the same now. So let us create our space, our sacred space. Sometimes it can be hard to slow down in front of a device, but that is what we will try to do in this space as we want to create room for our loved ones to be here with us. If you have brought a candle with you, please light it now. Remembering as you do so the very special person or people whom you love and whom you are remembering. Candles, symbols of peace and hope. Their light is soft and gentle and yet in the dark can be very bright. Our memories of those we love touch us in all sorts of ways, just like the light of a candle. Candles come out for celebrations. We celebrate. We celebrate the great advances in treatment and care of people living with HIV. Treatments that enable us to live life to the full we celebrate that treatment is reaching many people who have not previously had access to treatment. We celebrate that this treatment is saving lives. We remember. We remember the many people we have known 
who have died because of this virus. We remember partners, sons, daughters, parents, brothers, sisters, friends. People we have loved and who have left us as a result of HIV and AIDS. By our silence for a moment, we honour these people who live on in our hearts and our memories. We remember and honour people from our community who have died in the past year. As I read their names, Lucy will light a candle for each person. Some have had their names added to the shards suspended here at the Positive Living Centre. Darren. Peter. Ray. Bahai, Paul, Derek, Stephen. Jeff. Barry. Chris. Barry. Terry. Sue. Wallace. Robert Sam Paul Lee Mark Joe These candles show us the power of a tiny flame, especially when united together I am sure that those we are honouring here want us to go on with light and hope in our hearts. The AIDS memorial quilts are an evocative record of our history that wraps around us with the warmth and power of its imagery and shared memories. On behalf of the Melbourne AIDS Memorial Quilt Project, I graciously accept this contribution 
created by Sam. Sam is one of the individuals who died this year and will be forever memorialised on the glass shards at the centre. Thanks, Liz. We can leave as people of hope, as our loved ones would want us to leave. Hopeful that the advances in treatments will mean that all people will be able to live well, that the number of new infections will diminish to the point of no new infections, that there will be an end to the stigma and discrimination associated with HIV. Allow these candles that are burning brightly here and the candles burning beside you at home to honour these people who have been and who remain very special to you in your life. World AIDS Day I think of the loved ones of my friends, the people who I never got to meet and yet they enrich my community every day. I like this candle on World AIDS Day 2020 for two people that mean a lot to me who we lost far too early. John Luke and Russell Smithhurst. In memory of John and Russell. Now more than ever, I would like to remember and honour the following people. Their laughter, smiles and joy that they contributed to our lives will be greatly missed, but never forgotten. Sam, Robert, Ali and Chad. I'd like to light this candle for Brett Tindall, known as the Badger, and also for Kathleen Kay, uh, and uh, she was um, head of Family Health India, great um, HIV and AIDS activist as well, and both of them are working towards um, greater humanitarian um, response and uh, and really for a cure. That's what they're working for. Uh, so. Buying this candle for them. Never forgotten.
Remembering with love, Robbie, Bruce, Lawrence, Martin, and always Holly. Tonight, on World AIDS Day 2020, I've lit this candle for two very important people in my life. Don, who passed away in 1992, and Martin, who passed away in 2019. Activists have been central to the health and well-being of positive people because of their enormous dedication and capacity to improve their quality of life since HIV emerged in Victoria in the early 80s. The portraits that comprise the Legends exhibition are by no means the sum total of the many individuals who died with HIV, who we are indebted to, who made a difference and dedicated their lives to overcome the challenges brought about by the virus for positive people. This exhibition is illustrative of the brave people who have stood up as leaders, as activists, and as thinkers in the history of HIV AIDS, and how it has unfolded in our Victorian community. Raina Peterson is a dancer choreographer currently living and working on the lands of the Wurundjeri people. Raina uses their training in Mohaniyatam, classical dance of Kerala, India, to create experimental works exploring gender, sexuality, spirituality and time. This dance, Ganga, is the opening scene of their previous work, Kala, a classical Indian dance work about death which premiered at the Footscray Community Arts Centre in 2019. In this dance, Raina invokes the river Ganga, one of the holy rivers of India, a site of ritual for healing, purification and mourning.
ಶೀತಲ ವಿತ್ರೇ ಕಮಲ ಭವಾಂಡ ಕರಾಂಡ ಪವಿತ್ರೇ ಬಹುವಿಧ ಬಂಧನ ಶೇಡನ ಕಮಲ ಭವಾಂಡ wanted to walk in only that I've seen it done on other videos and I really liked it. My name is Dolly Diamond and you know it's been many many years that I've been involved with the World AIDS Day commemorative celebrations at the Positive Living Centre. But what a year it's been. An unbelievable year. Not one we really want to remember, is it? But World AIDS Day is always one of those years that we'll always want to remember. World AIDS Day, December 1st. That is when we gather to celebrate, to commemorate and to remember. I've been involved with these events for many years and I normally walk into your lives singing love is in the air well it is and it needs to be we all want to remember those that we've lost those that we've loved and those that we remember and this is no different it may be virtual but it is just as important i want you to sit back now and remember those in your life that you've lost and those in your life that you will remember. I've got people in my life that I will never ever forget and that is what we're doing right now. I've got my ribbon on and I'm sending my love. The Melbourne Gay and Lesbian Chorus is an award-winning choir with a passionate commitment to camaraderie through music. Celebrating 30 years in 2020, the choir has challenged stereotypes and stood as proud role models 
for those struggling with their sexuality or identity. Their individual diversity is their collective strength. They strive for musical excellence and offer a supportive environment for enjoyable learning and performance and welcome all who share their vision and love of music. The chorus is deeply committed to World AIDS Day, what it stands for and to this memorial service and it would not be the same without them being part of it. We have gathered in a different way to provide the opportunity to honour and celebrate those we have lost to HIV AIDS and remember how they enriched our lives. We gathered to recognise the advances in treatments and celebrate the work of our clinicians, researchers, volunteers, carers and advocates. 
We gathered as one community, forever bound by grief, yet driven by those bonds, to be together in this place, to stand quietly and reflect. And we gathered more determined than ever to challenge stigma, prejudice and discrimination, committed to making a difference for all people now living with HIV. My name is Luke Gallagher and it has indeed been my privilege to be part of these proceedings.